My name is Jackson Rector. I am the LiDAR technician and 107 drone pilot for HMB Professional Engineers. Uh, I plan and fly all of our missions. I also operate our mobile LiDAR unit, um, process both of those, and I also help extract um, and collect off of that data. So. Um, I've been working, just a little bit of background, more background around me, about me. I've been working in and around this industry for over seven years. I come from a background in aerospace. Um, I got my degree uh, locally here uh, in Tennessee at MTSU in unmanned aircraft systems. So um, I'm a big fan of drones and a big proponent of, of aerial LiDAR technology. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you today about a few of HMB's recent projects and how we were able to use aerial and mobile LiDAR um, together to find innovative solutions to some problems that arose. Uh, just a little background on us. HMB was founded in 1979. It's a multidisciplinary engineering firm with uh, clients for state and local agencies throughout the whole Southeast. We have over 150 uh, professionals on staff specializing in transportation design, planning, public utilities, water, wastewater, um, on and on, surveying, right of way, anything you need. And um, as mentioned before, and as some of you may know, um, HMB and, and Wiser Consultants recently joined forces. Uh, based in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Wiser is a Tennessee-based premier roadway design, site development, CE and I, and surveying provider with over 30 years of experience with a broad range of state and local agencies that we work with. Uh, the union of, of HMB and Wiser further strengthens HMB's roadway and design capabilities, including addition um, of mobile LIDAR and, and more advanced surveying capabilities. Really, with us together, there's, there's no project outside of our capabilities, uh, whether through in-house expertise or our decades of, of relationships in the infrastructure development community. Needless to say, all parties were very excited about this. So, um, a little bit of background on how we got into LiDAR and drones in the first place. We began exploring the world of UAS and drones around 2019, 2020. And starting like most companies, we purchased a simple DJI Phantom 4 Pro. And the Phantom 4 Pro was solid, is quickly deployable to job sites, easy to plan and fly, provides you with good photography from the camera. And we would begin, we would scan jobs and create orthos that would help us collect from either our mobile LiDAR that we collected or aerial or other LiDAR that was given to us. Um, building off of this success, we upgraded our mobile unit to a Trimble um, with two Regal scanners, the two Regal scanners that um, I believe GOQ uh, offers. Uh, they're very good scanners. The quality of this data rocketed us to greater and greater success, and it allowed us to tackle larger and more complex jobs. With these larger and more complex jobs came the need to capture more off-road data. Um, like most, we would shop around for subcontractors to provide us that aerial data and hope that the, the captured data would meet our standards of accuracy and be delivered in, in quick time. Most companies at this time relied on larger aircrafts. Um, aircrafts like helicopters and planes, which to fly scanners, is more expensive and costly, especially for smaller jobs. And you can imagine that these costs would either um, limit the scope of the jobs or dissuade our clients altogether. Now, identifying that potential in late 2021, we got uh, an early 515 system. I believe there's an upgraded one now. Um, but we got the, the, the TrueView 515, and we got the uh, DJI M300 to carry it, the 515 coming with a HESI Pandar. The DJI M300 stood out to us at the time for exceptional movability, uh, maneuverability and advanced flight capabilities aided by an inverted propeller design and a multitude of obstacle avoidance uh, features. We were drawn to how easily it could be carried with a survey crew, how simple it was to set up, program, and fly, and how quickly it could be packed up away again. The 515 specifically stood out to us then in the mid-price range uh, for exceptional performance featuring 
two dual oblique cameras, 20 or 26. Um, this might be the, the newer stat sheet, but um, with a 120 degree field of view, and that was coincident with our, our, the scanner track. Um, the system's precision was great, and it is still great. Um, th they've reported 15 millimeters of uh, precision at 75 meters on concrete, um, three to five accuracy on uh, RMSE, and all of that can be improved and is variable based on GNSS conditions, uh, control checkpoints, and, and the coordinate system that you can use. But this system allowed us to capture a large amount of data very quickly. Getting highly accurate roadway pavement data as well as brake lines and other features farther off the road. And the size of, and the area that we were able to capture and the quality of the data and the surfaces that we could create based off that data led to an explosion of projects, uh, which the projects would then increase in size and scope. And it was that integration of both mobile and aerial LIDAR along with your traditional survey techniques that, re that revolutionized the field of geospatial data recognition uh, and acquisition for us. This synergy allowed us to collect and deliver comprehensive mapping and analysis and provide unparalleled detail in our accuracy. Early this year, we began working on a full survey of the I-55 bridge over the Mississippi River in Memphis, Tennessee. And this bridge specifically is 75 years old. It's 50 feet above the water. It's 3,700 feet in length. And in fact, despite its age and, and disrepair now, it carries more vehicles than the, the much newer I-40 DeSoto Bridge. And this is where uh, a few problems arose, and we wanted to uh, obviously find solutions for them. And so these are, these are the way we found these solutions. As, as you may know, bridges, they tend to move a little bit. And what's more, you can see on this bridge specifically, it's encircled by a, a big steel cage, which makes it more difficult for um, traditional surveying equipment to, to get good GPS fixes. The combination of, of you know, having trouble with the interference and then slight movement, you have trouble setting checkpoints, control points, and making sure your, your shots are clean. So we needed a solution. And one of the great things about these, um, one of the great things about these TrueView scanners is their accuracy. Even these smaller and mid-sized models when flown, um, according to the data sheets and the spreadsheets that they give you, really making sure that your, your flight lines, your height, your elevation changes are, are, are accurate, they can provide highly dense and accurate data. And this was clear in the post-processing when you combine your, your static GPS burn with the GPS data on the aircraft, um, that being up in the air, you're free from much of the interference that, that you would see on the ground. And so we were able to set control and level uh, along the nearly two mile, I realize I have a dot on the screen. Um, we were able to set control and, and level throughout the two mile job, uh, ensuring the validity of our data. And up at the bridge where, where the land falls away to the water, uh, we were able to mobile and aerial scan the whole length of the bridge. Processing this data, knowing that our aerial was good, tied down on both ends, checked through a multitude of accuracy and pulse pack reports, we were then able to use the aerial data to check against the mobile data, which allowed us to generate and, and collect off of highly accurate and dense data quickly. And this also allowed us to protect our, our field guys, our survey crew, um, because the, the bridge at this time, it was down to one lane. Uh, it was under construction at the time, so we really couldn't get guys out there anyway. Um, and another way we were able to use um, our aerial LIDAR unit was when we encountered the, the need to get this low beam here uh, for our bridge sketch. You can see that that low beam is covered by about a seven foot concrete crosswalk or sidewalk. And a, a traditional scanner 
angled down wouldn't be able to hit this beam even you know because the farther you go out to the side it's still blocked and being above a large body of water and also under construction we weren't able to either scan up from the ground um, or measure down from the top uh, nor would th that would be trust the accuracy of those things but with the 515 we were actually able to come up with a unique solution we were able to adjust the scan angle um, GOQ support was very helpful in explaining the processes of doing this and, and what to look out for and the software to, to make this change was exceptionally user-friendly it only took a few clicks to modify so we adjusted the scan angle to 90 degrees and then the part I most enjoyed was we, we custom built a two-leg landing gear to support the aircraft while not blocking the sensor in the middle. Don't tell the FAA. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, so we did this by removing the single leg and replacing it with a two-leg support system um, with a, a gap in the middle so that the scanner could scan at 90 degrees um, without being blocked. And with some skill, um, I got to hand fly the M300 down at beam level uh, down the whole length of the bridge and back. And this was a, quite an innovative approach that allowed us to, to collect the data we needed on the low beam, on all the piers, demonstrating the versatility and the adaptability of, of our LiDAR system at the time in complex and more challenging scenarios. And this method ensured that we could provide comprehensive data for the bridge sketch, the bridge's assessment, and the future uh, planning that it needed. Uh, one of the most significant advantages that we experienced with our, our 515 system is the remarkable ease of deployability. The design of this, of this system and, and the other systems like it are, are meticulously crafted to ensure rapid deployment efficient operation and swift repackaging all while minimizing the potential for error. This streamlined process proved invaluable when we received uh, an urgent call regarding this this small bridge here on SR-222 which was in need of emergency survey. Uh, this is a small concrete bridge you can see. You can see how it's crumbling here in the corner and in multiple areas and, and in fact the the stream bank underneath it is eroding on either side. It's also supported by what looks like utility poles underneath it, which kind of seems bad enough, but when you add in the fact that it's seemingly crossed by at least four dump trucks every 15 minutes fully loaded, going about 50 miles an hour, uh, you can see how, how the, the need for, for an emergency survey, let's get this done, let's get building on it soon because the, the plant nearby that runs these trucks are just hammering it every 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 day and it would shake when you were on it it was it was really sketchy um, but back to the the versatility and and how easy this is to deploy we were able to conduct a thorough scan of this entire area in route to another job and in fact um, we were actually able to come to this job scan the whole area on the way to the I-55 bridge job. We got this call on a Friday afternoon and we were able to be on site on Monday. Um, it, it, was, it was remarkable how quick we were able to get out there. The terrain surrounding this bridge is complex. You have a vast stream network with numerous channels weaving beneath it and the bridge is uh, around the bridge the waterway is teeming with life you had snakes you had high weeds and vegetation which would have added a layer of complexity and time to our field crews workload time which we didn't have <clears throat> but through precise planning the data we collected was so rich in detail the expansive area that we were able to cover in in just a few hours enabled our office to meticulously extract a wealth of features and the comprehensive nature of this data allowed us to deliver a full survey in a little over a week and a half. The, the swift turnaround is just, it's not only a testament to the efficiency of, of this LiDAR system, but the dedication of our team in providing timely and accurate results 
in the face of deadlines and, and environmental factors. Now we've been thrilled with our LiDAR performance over the past few years, and we found it important to keep an open mind as to the uses of our equipment, especially this aerial unit, which is so, so versatile and so usable. And so beyond traditional surveying, uh, LiDAR has a wide range of, of uses. And I'll be swift here, but I just wanted to add a few taking off in, in you know, this, the early 21st century and really in the 2010s. Um, the commercial adoption of LiDAR has, has been varied. We have it in surveying, but also in um, you know, high precision spatial and depth data for advanced driver systems, um, logistics sector, you have automated robots such as forklifts, you have delivery trucks and automated systems like that. And then I was talking earlier um, with, about how I, I discovered it first from Discovery TV shows. Um, flying in, in the Amazon specifically and discovering uh, structures and surfaces that, that were previously hidden to the canopy. So with that in mind, we've always been trying to expand our capabilities and one such expansion that we've, we've done a few times now is measuring tree heights, uh, a process which is, I believe, made easier now with GeoQs um, coming out with a, a tool to support this. But what we have used it for recently is uh, called a 34 to 1 approach survey. And in aviation, the 34 to 1 approach survey refers to a, a safety evaluation of the airspace around an airport to make sure it's free of obstructions. And what you do is you have an obstacle clearance surface, um, which is a, a, an imaginary surface at a slope of an aspect ratio, This in this one specifically 34 to 1, so about 3 degrees. and um, and it helps in precision instruments along the takeoff and, and landing approach um, points to, to ensure the safety um, of that in that critical moment. And for an example of this, we did our most recent survey of KMBT Murfreesboro last August. I have a funny story about this, which I'll abbreviate, but um, we obtained the FAA and the airport clearance to do this. We picked uh, a day in which the airport runway was shut down uh, for construction and I was up in the air scanning and not once but twice the local life flight helicopter decided it needed to take off which is fine more important than me uh, I was able to pause get out of their way and let them let them do what they needed to do but after a private jet and a student pilot also decided they needed to land I started taking it personally and I, I wondered if, if the airport was even shut down or not. But, uh, but, but that's, that's one of the great things about these aerial LiDAR systems is that you can pause them, you can go back, you can land, uh, you, can, you can make it up. And so it it's just kind of goes to show um, the capabilities on that side. But for any approach survey, um, you create a, a vertical plane with a slope and you just simply identify obstacles that break that plane. And when processing the data, we identified this, this ridge line here, uh, which has been shifted for some reason, but this, this ridge line of trees to the northeast, northwest of, of, the, um, of the field across the street from the airport. And this, is, this is very stunning to the airport, and so they had us come back out and fly even farther back. And we ended up identifying 47 unique intrusions into this vertical plane. And to give you some context, basically that, that whole tree line is right in the either landing or takeoff path of that airport. So it's, it's really important that we have um, clear and precise data on this. And, and I want to impress upon you how vital this is to have an airborne laser um, because it, just to think about how difficult it would be to get out there with a hand scanner, something based off the ground, and to get such dense data and such exact data um, on that big forested area. But the survey, it, it provided extremely um, important information to, to KMBT. And in fact, it even provided um, two utility poles that were right off the edge of the runway that were built, uh, they were newly built, and they were built about a foot too tall. And that really ticked off the airport. But they were happy with us, and, and we were happy to keep our drone working. So. That, that is just another 
exciting thing that that you can do with with aerial lidar and and so really HMB is constantly evolving and we're the the success of all of these units that we have has led us to look into upgrading our units upgrading our processes getting new aircrafts getting uh, you know anything we need to keep to keep riding this wave uh, currently we're expanding to cut fill cut fill quantities um, and flying through pipes for inspections. Uh, we've really, through the help of the people here, Earl Dudley, um, who's always been so helpful, so willing, um, GOQ, who's always been able to assist us, you know, very quickly in anything we've needed. Um, we've really distinguished ourselves in this field, and it's to us, it's the synergy of mobile and aerial lidar coming together reinforced by traditional surveying techniques that that sets you aside. It gives you a full and comprehensive look at the area that you're surveying. It gives you tons of data, tons of ability to not have problems because you have the data. If you need to come back to that job because they expanded it, you have the data. You don't have to send guys back out there and go 15, 20, 30 more feet because you just didn't capture it. You're able to get a huge area of what you need and it really it really just bolsters what you can do and your capabilities so we've been thoroughly impressed we've been thoroughly excited um, about what we have gotten from GOQ what we've gotten from our aerial uh, and, and mobile systems in the past and we are excited by the the bright future um, that we see before us as we expand as we grow as we continue to just do solid work and, and try to excel in, in every aspect of, of what, we're, what we're working towards. So that's it for me. Thank you, guys. Um, if you had any, any brief questions, I, I'm happy to help. But, but, um, but yeah, we're just, we really like the data, and we really like working with um, this vast amount of, of different sensors and, and combining them together to get exceptional data. So, thank you.